Welcome to the Expert Series, brought to you by the Lupus Foundation of America. Our health education team is here to bring you experts in lupus to discuss topics to help you live better. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. My name is Alyssa, and I'll be your host. Today's guest is Dr. Sasha Bernatsky. She is a rheumatologist, a James McGill professor, and a senior scientist at the Center for Health Outcomes Research and Division of Clinical Epidemiology at the Research Center er, at the Research Institute of the McGill University Health Center. She is an established leader in research and knowledge translation, well over 400 peer-reviewed articles and numerous awards, including the Arthritis Alliance of Canada's KT Practice Award. She is experienced in using very large national and international data sets to study drug exposures and complex diseases and their resultant effects on morbidity, mortality, and economic outcomes. Her particular expertise lies in using big data from health service use linked to additional clinical sources of information. She's also the lead author on an abstract titled Updated Analysis of Cancer Incidents and Risk Factors in Large International SLE Cohort. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Bernatsky. Thank you for inviting me. And then our first question here is um, kind of a two-parter. You know, what is the link between uh, lupus and cancer? And is there an uh, uh, risk of uh, in certain cancers in people with lupus? So I think people are interested in potential links between lupus and cancer because of the knowledge that cancer occurs because of unregulated multiplication of certain cells in the body, including immune cells. And in lupus, there's an unregulated overactivity of certain immune cells. So it's no surprise that there's been an interest in the overlap between cancer and lupus for many decades. And in fact, some of the drugs used to treat lupus were first used to treat cancers. So regarding the question of, is there an increased risk of certain cancers in people with lupus? um, On average, a person with lupus has a cancer risk that is not that much different from a similarly aged person in the general population. We do estimate generally that there's a small increased risk, maybe 10 to 15 percent in in lupus versus the general population. We do see that some relatively rare cancers, like certain white cell cancers or certain types of lymphoma, are about two or three times more common in lupus compared to the general population. However, most people with lupus will never get a lymphoma because the absolute risk is at most one in a thousand per year. There are other cancers that are increased in lupus. Uh, For example, some researchers have found links with liver cancer, head and neck cancer, skin cancer, et cetera. But most of these um, cancers are relatively rare uh, as an outcome again. So uh, we do have evidence, for example, that lung cancer is increased in lupus, but much of that risk seems to be related to smoking. Okay. And are there things people with lupus can do to decrease the risk of developing cancer? So to decrease cancer risk, people with lupus should do what we are all recommended to do to decrease Mm -hmm. cancer risk. The number one thing is not to smoke, to stop smoking if you currently are, and not to start if you currently don't. Not smoking will also decrease the risk of heart disease and may even make some lupus treatments more effective. Then in terms of skin cancer risk, avoiding exposure uh, of our skin to sunlight is important. And that could also be helpful in limiting some forms of lupus activity. Other things that we can all do, including lupus patients to limit cancer risk is to try to eat healthy, to exercise and maintain a healthy weight. And regarding diet, some things to focus on are avoiding red meat, limiting sugary drinks and highly processed foods and eating more fiber, uh, including vegetables. Some health agencies also suggest not drinking alcohol. Okay. And then um, what is the health impact of a cancer diagnosis in someone with lupus? 
So overall, I would expect someone with lupus to receive basically the same care, the same kind of cancer care as somebody without lupus. Mm -hmm. In the past, there were concerns that lupus patients may not receive certain treatments like radiation treatment that they otherwise should have due to concerns about radiation side effects being more common in diseases like lupus. But what we aim for today is that lupus patients who otherwise would be a good candidate for a given cancer therapy should go ahead and receive that therapy. Now, sometimes a medication that a patient is already on for lupus may have to be suspended or stopped due to the possibility that the medication may worsen the side effects of chemotherapy, but those kind of decisions are always made on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, and then um, now is cancer treatment different for uh, for people with lupus? And can a person uh, with lupus, can they still take their medications while they're uh, getting treatment for cancer? So it, it this again, this tends to be on a case-by-case -case, um, basis. And uh, you, a person, when, when they're diagnosed with, with cancer, depending on the kind of cancer, may mm -hmm. have more than one cancer specialist. They may have a, a, an oncologist. They may have a surgeon. They may have somebody who's in charge of radiation therapy. So uh, often the decisions about the medications to continue or not are made um, between those physicians and the uh rheumatologist or, or specialist in charge of the care of the person with lupus um, with, of course, the, you know, understanding and involvement of the, the, the person themselves. Um, so uh, as I mentioned that there are some medications that a lupus patient might be taking that may have to be held during uh, chemotherapy uh, treatment, but it's always, these decisions are always made on a case by case basis. Thank you. And then um, kind of jumping um, into the, like the abstract, you know, can you explain your research um, for the abstract and, and sure. kind of like the what was the, the reasoning behind it and the conclusion? Sure. So um, given the interest I mentioned in studying links between cancer and lupus, this project was the first time we studied a large group of new onset lupus patients. Um, from an international cohort, which was mm -hmm. uh, put together as an initiative of the Systemic Lupus International, Systemic Lupus International Collaborating Clinics, or SLIC. Uh, so the cohort was uh, initially uh, created by Dr. Yerwitz and uh, uh, many SLIC investigators. And we have been studying these individuals and following them up for 20 years or so. And um, we, for the purposes that this cohort was created to look at more than one outcome, but, but we've been examining the outcome of cancer and we um, looked at the effects of age, sex, smoking, lupus clinical factors, including medications at baseline on cancer risk. So we found that anti-malarial treatment, which was primarily hydroxychloroquine, seem to be associated with less breast cancer. And we found higher ca skin cancer risk with cyclophosphamide. But one of the really most prominent findings was that smoking was a really clear risk factor for lung cancer, which is expected. And I would say this is one of the most important takeaway findings from our study and uh, just emphasizes and highlights that uh, uh, we need to really focus some attention on ensuring as far as possible lupus patients don't smoke if they are smoking to that they could quit and if they don't smoke not to not to start okay and then um lastly is there um a specific association with any other particular cancer in lupus um such as like is there a connection between breast cancer and lupus so women with lupus may be less likely to develop um, what we call hormone sensitive cancers like breast cancers. So we don't know why that is exactly, but um, a risk of breast cancer seems to depend in part on how much estrogen your body produces or how much estrogen you're exposed to. So it um, it's 
possible that that might play a role here. So some possibilities are, for example, that women with lupus, it's known that they start their periods later and they go into a menopause earlier than women in the general population. So that might mean less estrogen in the body, which would could theoretically decrease the risk of breast cancer and possibly other cancers like endometrial and ovarian cancer in lupus. So that's one possibility. So another possibility is um, the antimalarial drugs like hydroxychloroquine, which um, can potentially play a role in um, cancer. So it's uh, antimalarial drugs are, have actually been studies studied as a, a potential adjuvant or added therapy for people getting um, chemotherapy for certain cancers like lung and maybe breast cancer. So the possibility that uh, people with lupus have um, uh, exposures to these antimalarial drugs like hydroxychloroquine, there seems to be, uh, I think, sufficient evidence suggests that that might be one of the things that is uh, decreasing risk of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and then the another third possibility I can mention is that the immune system in lupus may have special abilities to detect precancerous uh, cells and destroy them. So um, the immune system in, in, in any person, uh, whether you have lupus or not, part of its job is to detect abnormal precancerous cells and then get rid of them so that you would never uh, develop that, uh, that cancer. So it doesn't always work, but overall, it's a pretty good system generally for humans to try to avoid developing a cancer with this um, ability of our immune system to, to delete or get rid of precancerous cells. So some have suggested that lupus patients may be particularly good, perhaps, at deleting precancerous cells. So perhaps Perhaps that's um, site specific. Maybe you know, precancerous breast uh, uh, cancer breast cells are um, more uh, likely to be deleted in lupus than in the general population, which could be a third possible um, explanation for why we tend to see decreased risk of breast cancer in systemic lupus. So, but I will add to that that uh, even though. There may be some cancers that women with lupus may be at a little bit less uh, risk for. It doesn't mean that they should stop getting their mammogram. So we advocate that all people with lupus have at minimum um, adherence uh, or undergo the kind of general population cancer screening that is recommended in, your, in, in where you live. So um, there are certain um, guidelines for mammograms, certain guidelines for colon cancer screening and other uh, kinds of cancer screening. And those should all be followed carefully. Um, often in, in Canada, at least it's, it's under the guidance of your family doctor. Now, we haven't talked much about um, uh, cervical cancer, but uh, getting pap tests done to detect precancerous lesions is always also a very important part of uh, uh, women with lupus's overall uh, healthcare uh, practice. Wow, that's really, really interesting. Um, and actually, that was the last of my questions. Um, so thank you so much, Dr. Renatsky, for talking to us about lupus and cancer. We really appreciate your time and expertise. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. We invite those of you listening in to check out our past episodes of the Expert Series by visiting lupus.org forward slash the expert series, where you can also subscribe to get alerts when podcasts are released. If you have any lupus related questions, please reach out to our health education specialist by email at lupus.org forward slash health educator or by phone at 1-800-558-0121. And of course, we'd love to hear from you. If there's a topic you'd like to see covered, email us at info at lupus.org. Thank you until next time.